Without further ado, let me get started with um, first the problem set. So it's a mix of questions. There are questions that relate to uh, concepts like multiple choice or multiple answers. Those I'll skip because they basically relate to the reading. Um, and one thing for those of you watching it, I guess today, uh, yeah, today, before Friday. Um, it says pass to do here. Please ignore it. It's because um, I think I had this assignment set up to be due on Monday, and some of you started it, and that kind of sets what the due date is on my open math. But when you access the assignment, you will see the correct uh, personal due date of uh, Friday. Um, I just there's something so they say list not in the review mode, which would have been super confusing. Um, and so I'm going to, yeah. So anyways, ignore the past to due. Uh, you will see the correct due date as you are studying on this assignment yourself. So uh, let me just, uh, uh, I guess, scroll through each question. I don't know, to, uh, remember by question number, which ones require calculation. So, all right, this one looks like it requires calculation. So I'll pause it here and then answer the question. So it says, calculate the force between two charges of some amount of charge separated by some um, number number of meters. And if you haven't read this in the chapter already, then hint will kind of take you to the section that covers it. And uh, when you go to this, well, I'll do it just to this once. Um, for the other ones, I'll just write down the formulas that I do know. So when you follow this link, it'll take you to section 10.2. And uh, ideally, you should read it. <laughs> That's what I recommend. <laughs> you should endeavor to understand everything. But what it really comes down to is for the purpose of the, that particular question, you need to know this Coulomb's law. So that's what I'm going to write down. And I need to know this constant here. And that's what I'm going to write down. So let me go back and write it down. So um, I'm working with Coulomb's law, which says, that the uh, electric force between two charged particles is proportional to the product of the charges uh, divided by distance squared. And there's uh, some constant here that we call Coulomb's constant or the numerical value of the force constant K. I saw it, so let me, before I forget it, let me write it down. I think it was 8.99 times 10 to nine in the appropriate units. Um, so this is the point of the semester where I'm going to kind of start leaning heavily on the fact that in SI unit system, the units are kind of set up so that this will have the correct units so that the force works out to be Newtons. So I'm just gonna lean heavily on that and not um, worry about remembering all of this for now anyway. Um, so, all right, so that, uh, so this is the formula that I'm working with. So I just need to, need to plug in the numbers. So it said 0 0.85 coulombs each. So I put 0 0.85 coulombs to each of these two numbers. And then the distance that I need to plug in is 1.7 meters. And once again, what I'm trusting is that because all these are in basic SI units, that when I work out all the units, I'm gonna get a unit of Newton at the end. So um, I could write it up, but I guess, uh, let me just uh, type it into calculator, just straight forward. Um, so I'm using this uh, on-screen calculator. Um, uh, hopefully it's similar to most people's calculator. So let me just type it in. Um, it says, Oh, wait one second, does it have... Uh, I think, let me just test one thing. I think that EXP, okay, yeah, that's uh, what I need. Okay, so I'm going to type in the value of K first. That's gonna be 8.99, and it's times 10 to the power of nine. A lot of calculators have this uh, E notation or exponential notation. And when I type press EXP and then type in nine, what this means in calculator notation is this is 8.99 times 10 to the power of nine times 0 0.85 
uh, and I have one more of that. So times 0 0.85 divided by 1.7 squared. And this is real, um, actually where you might want to be familiar with how your own calculator works. I think uh, with this on screen calculator, I'm pretty sure if I type in 1.7 and then squared, it'll, yeah, it kind of takes precedence there. So I'm dividing by square of 1.7 and equals, this is the number I get, two and two, two, four, seven, and then five, zero, 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 zero. So, um, this is where you want to watch the unit that the question asks for, asks your answer in. So when you look at the question text here, it's asking for an answer in the units of million newtons. So I know this mark is for a thousand, this mark is for a million. So I have 2,247. 0.5 million newtons as the first. It's uh, as I say in question text. It's not meant to be very realistic. Uh, let me just pull it off to the side so that I can still see. <laughs> um, so two two four seven point five. Now sometimes as you are doing this on your calculator, you might um, kind of. Uh, you might not feel uh, very comfortable with how your calculator works. In that case, it's uh, uh, helpful to have uh, something else that you can check your calculator with so that um, you can at least see what the correct answer is. The tool that I recommend for that is something called Ulfram Alpha. So um, the one, the nice, nicest thing about Ulfram Alpha is it uh, shows you how it interpreted your input. So let me type in uh, what it should be in Wolfram Alpha, 8.99, and then the, um, the E notation would be E9 uh, times 0 0.85 times 0 0.85 divided by 1.7. And on a keyboard, this uh, carrot symbol, it's a shift and the number 16, uh, that's uh, the exponent and I'm going to put two and raising 1.7 to power of two. So when I enter that, uh, Wolfram Alpha shows me how it interpreted my input. That's, uh, and I can kind of double check that how it interpreted my input is consistent with what it was supposed to be. So um, if uh, somehow you're not getting this answer on your calculator, then this is one way you can check that um, well, if you are understanding correctly how your calculator works. I do recommend that you do become familiar with your own calculator because on your exam, if you are taking it in person, that you won't be able to use Wolfram Alpha. I guess if you're taking online version, then this is actually a lot as long as you're using it only for calculator. So, all right, so that's the first one. Let uh, I'll try to go th more quickly through the remainder of these questions. Let's see. Uh, next one, um, this is an, well, it's a conceptual question, so I'll have you work it out. Um, let's see, okay, this is another numerical question. So it says a test charge of something feels a force of some newtons. What is the magnitude of electric field? So hopefully you've read the chapter, you've read it through section 10.3. Oh. Uh, I guess I'm giving you the equation here. Um, <laughs> it looks like it's actually telling me everything. So let me just uh, uh, write it out. So let me just double check. It looks like I have, um, I'm given the force of 5.5 newtons in basic SI units. So I have force, I have charge, 9.6 times 10 to minus six, Q. All right, so I guess for electric field, I just take the ratio. So for electric field, it's just going to be equal to 5.5 newtons, that's the unit in basic SI units, divided by 9.6 times 10 to minus 6 coulombs. And um, you can actually, if you wrote down the units here as what it is, newtons, then you can actually see that the units work out, Newton per coulomb, 
I have Newton per Coulomb here. So it's going to work out. So let me do that on the calculator. Yeah, calculator. All right, let me clear this. So it's um, um, 5.5. 5. Now, um, on this calculator, since I know how to use the E notation, this is what I can do. Divide by 9.6 E minus 6. Oh, wait. <laughs> One second. Um, I did something wrong. 5.5 .5 divided by 9.6 E. And there's two different minus symbols. There's this minus operator as in subtraction. And there's this one, which is a sine operator. So I can turn that into negative sine instead of plus. Complicated. Um, all right. <laughs> so, so that's the answer. Now, um, suppose you either are working with a calculator that doesn't have the E notation or you, or you don't know how to use it, then you have to make sure that you use the parenthesis to, so that, um, so this is a, a common mistake that someone could be making. You could be doing this, 5.5 divided by 9.6 times 10 to minus seven. So you do 10 raised to power of minus, did I say seven? Oops, uh, wait. Um, 10 raised to power of oh, minus six. Minus, um, that's what it does. Um, yeah, 5.5. .5 divided by 9.6 times 10 to minus six. Now, when you look at this answer with the previous one, you can see that the answers are different. It's because um, uh, this is not the same thing as what's written here. It is literally 5.5 .5 divided by 9.6, and this times 10 to minus six, you went into the numerator. So, in, so that's a mistake, I shouldn't have done that. In order to avoid a mistake, this is how you should do this calculation. 5.5 .5 divided by parenthesis, uh, 9.6 times 10, and this is the button I should have pressed. Because I already wrote 10, which is x, and after this button, I get to write what y is, which is minus 6, or 6 and then minus sign. All right, so that should have, yeah. So fit equal, and now I get an answer that I got before. Uh, or if I scroll, this uh, the first answer which was right. So so that's uh, so um, I guess the moral of the story here is uh, be familiar, be, be very familiar with how your own calculator works, so that during the exam you are not fumbling through um, what the order of operation is. So it's giving me five seven two nine one six, and then it's repeating. Um, and this is another place where you have to watch out for what unit the question is asking for your answer in. So if we were just asking for answer in Newton per Coulomb, then that's what I would have put in and that would be correct. But here the, the unit that the question is being asked to in is not Newton per Coulomb, it's in million Newton per Coulomb. So there are different ways to get, okay, so what, I, what do I need to put into this box here? Um, the, I think the easiest way, as long as you have the calculator, is to divide this 10 to the six. Or what you can imagine is, so you have that answer there, five, seven, two, nine, one, I'm going to round it here, nine, one, seven. And this answer is in Newton per Coulomb. And what you really need to do is you need to convert this into this unit, 10 to the six Newton per Coulomb. So what you are really doing is uh, multiply by, um, I guess so on the numerator, I want 10 to six Newton per Coulomb. And if I'm just multiplying by that, then um, I'm changing my number and I don't want that. So I really want to be divide, uh, multiplying by one so, which means a quantity where the, the numerator and the denominator has same physical value. Here, um, so the same physical value happens to be just uh, 10 to the six times 
Newton per coulomb. I mean, it's the same thing as what's on the numerator. I just wrote it out this way so that you can see that Newton per coulomb cancels out. So on the numerator, I'll have this. That means numerically what I have to do is take this number and divide it by 10 to the power of six. So let me do that here and that will give me a number I can plug in. So take the number, divide it by uh, 10 raised to power of six. All right, so I get 0 0.573. Let me plug that in, 0 0.573, and that should be the correct answer. All right, let's keep going. Um, uh, let's see, here's another question that's uh, asking me to do numerical calculation, which is probably going to involve uh, scientific notation. Um, so it says an experiment apart is set up with electric field, here, it's giving you the unit in volts per meter, because I think of, um, depending on where you are in the reading, you might not have same volts per meter, and that could confuse you. That's why I'm saying it's the same as Newton per column. And if you work out the units, volt per meter is the same as Newton per column. Um, so if an electron is released within this electric field, what are the magnitudes of the force on the electron and its acceleration? All right, so I have, uh, this is my electric field. And if you look at the hint, then it says, oh, remember that force is, it's actually the same expression that you just saw earlier. It, it's now solved for force. So the force is equal to charge. And the question is actually telling you what the electron charge is so that you don't have to look up. You can actually look this up on Wolfram Alpha, by the way. Um, so no from alpha, if you look up something like electron charge, it'll tell you uh, electron charge is, uh, there it is, minus 1.6 times 10 to minus 90. Uh, but in this question, since it, I'm given that, let me just use that. So the electric force on the electron is that amount of charge, 1.602 times 10 to minus 19, and I'm just gonna trust the units will work out, so I won't write it down. Times the electric field is equal to 2.3 times 10 to the six, and I'm gonna trust that units will work out. Um, all right, so uh, for the force, let me multiply that out and see what I get. I'll use the calculator here. So I have one point 602, and I'm just going to use the notation. That's the quickest way to put in the scientific notation. Minus 19 times uh, 2.3 E6. All right, so I get that. <laughs> uh, can I do this in scientific notation? Uh, I don't know, never mind. Uh, so, uh, whatever it is, um, one thing, uh, let, yeah, uh, let me copy it down so that I not just, so how many zeros? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 zeros after the decimal. So, zero point one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 36846. Six. Now, if you were to put this in here, it would tell you that that answer is wrong. It's because this is in a uh, unit of newtons. But what the question is asking for is in the units of pico newtons. So you need to convert newtons into pico newtons. This is where you kind of need to know, need to begin to know the um, the metric prefixes or SI prefixes. And uh, if you don't remember what PICO stands for, this is where you can find it. When you go to the textbook, the textbook has a section called useful information. It's at the very end. Um, I think it might have been linked from something earlier. When you look at useful information, it has a bunch of tables that should be helpful to people who uh, are trying to remember some uh, numbers and pieces of information. And one of the tables is the metric prefixes. 
So it has all this, and uh, there it is, pico. So pico means uh, 10 to the power of minus 12. So I need to convert this number here into, which is in units of newtons, into pico newtons. So I'm basically doing unit conversion that was covered way earlier in the semester. So I'm multiplying this by one. So on the numerator, I want uh, pico newtons. So I want this to be one pico newton. And according to the table that I looked up, one pico newton should be 10 to the power of minus 12 newtons. So that's what I'm multiplying this number by, which means going back to the calculator, I guess I need to be dividing by 10 to the power of minus 12. So let me do that. Divided by, oh, one way to express 10 to the power of minus 12 is one exponent minus 12. It's one times 10 to the power of minus 12. So when you do that, you get 0 0.6, uh, 0 0.368. Uh, three significant figures are enough, so let me do that, 0 0.368. So here, you don't actually have to use any scientific notation, but you do kind of need to know, understand that background with the powers of 10. Uh, all right, so that's one, and it's asking for its uh, acceleration. Um, so the hint doesn't say, but this is where you really ought to remember the material from your um, exam one, that net force is equal to mass times acceleration. And here, the electric force is the only force, which means acceleration is the electric force up there divided by mass. So um, I guess I will write that out on the calculator. I think I already have the force. Um, well, in units of, unit of piconewtons. <laughs> so let me put that uh, piconewton thing back. One e. Uh, minus 12. Okay, so pico newton is back in, I mean, sorry, it's back to the newtons. So now I can do, what I can do is take this uh, force and divide out the mass of the electron to get the acceleration of the electron. So divide this number by 9.11 times 10 to my, uh, times 10 to minus 31 equals, all right, this big number, I'm not gonna read out the whole thing. Um, now, I'm kind of actually happy to see that big number because looking ahead, what I'm answering, so if I was just answering it in meters per second squared, then great. I do that, get the number, put the number in, and I'm all done. What uh, the extra step you need to take here is this uh, metric um, prefix. Uh, or the power of 10 that you have to deal with, 10 to the power of 15. So you are converting from units of meters per second, that's the unit these numbers are in, to unit of, you can kind of treat this as a unit, uh, 10 to the 15 meter per second squared. It, there might be a prefix that, uh, I don't care about the, it's fine. <laughs> so let me divide that by, um, so, um, so one way to get what should be going on here is to just divide uh, 10 to the power of 15. So let me do that. So I have divided by 10 to the power of 15. That gets me oh, 404 times 10 to the power of 15. Okay, so let me put in 404, 404. And I should be done. Let's check. Uh, so clicking submit. All right, that's it. So um, this is really the um, uh, something that uh, if is depending on the degree of how much you have forgotten it from your math classes, this is what you need to review so that you can uh, one do these questions on your homework. But if it's only on homework, then I would just tell you use Wolfram Alpha because it really does make your job easier. But because you might see some of this on your exam as well, especially for those of you taking exam in person, I recommend that you try work it out using your calculator that you can use during the exam. 
All right, let's keep going. Question 9, 10. Um, I thought there was one more numerical. Question 11. I guess uh, this is probably an experimental apparatus is set up with a voltage difference um, of something. I guess that's probably going to be relevant. Um, I guess this is where you um, kind of have to know some of, uh, well, uh, let me just keep on reading. <laughs> so that's the voltage difference. If an electron moves from the positively charged electrode to the negatively charged electrode, you know, how much energy does the electron gain in joules and electron volts? I guess calculation-wise, uh, joules are actually easier. Um, those, uh, sorry, um, calculation-wise, it's not easier, but concept-wise, it's easier. Because with the joules, you can kind of, it is a standard SI, SI unit of energy. So if you have, um, so this is the expression that I was half remembering there, that change in potential energy uh, from change in electric potential is equal to the charge of the test charge, or in this case, I guess it would be the electron. Uh, times the change in the electric potential. Uh, here there's a bit of a sign issue because the charge of the electron is actually negative. Um, so yeah, so in joules, in, it's uh, simpler in this sense. If I plug in charge in coulombs and the voltage or electric potential change in volts, then all the units will work out. I'll get the unit of joules for the change in potential energy, or how much it's the energy that the electron gains as it accelerates between the electrodes. So, um, so yeah, I, I guess I'll just do the calculation. So I hope the some of these numbers are in the hints, so I don't have to look it up separately. Oh yeah, it's giving me the electron charge. So let me just plug in the numbers. Uh, I'm going to ignore the sign here because uh, electron gains, it, that language is going to take care of all the signs. So then um, let me do this. So I'm going to just ignore the signs. So the amount of charge, the elementary charge or the magnitude of the charge of the electron is 1.602. Um, the E notation, minus 19. Uh, that's the charge, and you multiply it by the um, um, uh, by the amount of volts, which is thirty-seven kilovolts, or thirty-seven thousand. So thirty-seven and three zeros equals. Um, um, this is some number of zeros. Let me not write that all out. All I need is the fact that the question is asking for the answer, the blank, in terms of the unit of pico joule. So we looked uh, it up just now. Pico means 10 to minus 12. So um, here to convert this joule number into pico joules, then I want to be... Um, I want to be dividing by 10 to minus... Um, 12, <laughs> let me just double check, that's what Pico is, yeah, 10 to minus 12. All right, uh, so then divide by, uh, I'm gonna use the e notation again. So 10 to minus 12. All right, um, so that's the answer in Pico Joule. So it's uh, still got some zeros less, 0 0.00593, so that should be it. 0 0.00593, and we'll see if that's correct when we put in the numbers. Uh, so electron gains that much energy, or in other words, this is where uh, calculationally, actually, this is easier. But conceptually, I've seen people take longer to kind of grasp what we mean by the unit of electron um, Oh, I guess electron volt. And actually, when you write it this way, it's a little bit clear what electron volt means. It really means this. It means um, it's a unit of energy, but the way the baseline is established is um, you calculate it for one elementary charge, charge of the proton or charge of the electron. So 
So that's equal to one, um, one E, where E stands for this, times the, um, um, times uh, the change in voltage. So 37 kilovolt or that's gonna be equal to uh, 37 times 10 to the three volt. Um, uh, volt. So when you plug in these numbers, then you get the uh, how much the energy the electron gained in electron volts. But looking at this, I hope you realize that you don't actually really have to calculate any number. And this unit of electron volts or EV, it really works out to be it's a, a multiplication of E, the elementary charge, and volt, the, um, the electric potential difference. So when you do this multiplication, E together with the volts are going to give you electron volts, but I only really need to worry about this number, uh, 37 times 10 to the three, uh, which was uh, the amount of elect uh, voltage difference. So, um, so that's gonna be the, the answer here in terms of electron volts. And I guess, um, well, the question is still telling me how to answer the E notation. So let me just painfully type this out. It's a 37. Thousand electron volt to so three zeros. All right, that, that should be it. Let's see. Yeah, that that's it. <laughs> um, hopefully that's uh, relatively clear. Let me look at question twelve. All right, so that's all the questions on this set that requires calculation.